So, a while back, AMD had this crazy idea to allow their Vega GPUs to use System RAM as VRAM, with the card's built-in memory acting as a kind of cache. This feature, called High Bandwidth Cache Controller, only worked on the handful of cards that had Vega GPUs and HBM2, like the Vega 56, 64 and Radeon 7. In theory, it allowed you to allocate as much RAM as you could spare to quote-unquote VRAM, meaning that a nominally 8GB GPU could effectively become 12, 16, 24 gigs, or even higher. In reality, this doesn't always help. I tested it out last year with my test rig at the time, which used a Ryzen 5 5600X and 32 gigs of DDR4 3600, and found that it often caused as many performance problems as it solved. I did say I'd give it another try once I upgraded to DDR5, which I have now done. However, the results didn't really merit making a full video. It turns out that using regular system RAM as VRAM has its downsides. Modern GDDR6 and even GDDR5X are orders of magnitude higher clocked than even the fastest sticks of DDR5 you can buy. Real VRAM communicates directly with the GPU, being situated just a few millimetres from the chip itself. System RAM has to talk with the GPU not just via the memory bus, but also the CPU and the PCI Express bus. These bottlenecks mean that increasing RAM clocks, even by switching to DDR5, probably wouldn't give any better results. And that was the case. The Last of Us has had some optimizations over the last year, so it's not quite as bad as it was, but at 1080 Ultra it still wants more than 8 gigs of VRAM. Playing at these settings with HBCC disabled results in roughly a 41 FPS average with lows in the 30s. Of course, having more VRAM should improve performance. We've all seen hardware unboxed tests, we know what's supposed to happen. The problem is when you give it slow VRAM, it makes the problem worse. 16 gigs of DDR5 4400 might increase the average frame rate a bit, but it also increases the frequency and severity of frame time spikes, sending 1% low scores into the low double digits. 5200 mega transfers? Even worse, somehow. 6000? Basically the same. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is one of the few games i found that really does benefit from HBCC, in a big way. Enabling it with 4400 speed RAM adds about 10 frames per second to the average. However, increasing the RAM frequency has basically no effect. Of course, it's still an improvement, but not without its drawbacks. When using system RAM, every scene transition has a brief stuttering pause for a few frames, which doesn't occur when using normal VRAM. And those were kind of the best case scenarios. HBCC hasn't been included in any AMD GPUs since the switch from GCN to RDNA, so this was always going to be a pretty niche video, but when the question was, does fast DDR5 make HBCC better? And the answer is a pretty unequivocal no. Well, maybe that's an interesting tidbit, uh, insight into why HBCC is a footnote in the history of GPU developments, but that's about it. Sorry, this was the second of three video ideas that didn't pan out for me this week. Luckily, the other two are now back on track. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.